Hey, thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Lafayette, and it is Wednesday. We're in Acts chapter 2, finished Acts chapter 1 yesterday. I'm reading out of the New King James Version of the Bible, so make sure you have your Bibles with you. Verse 1, when the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Now let me explain to you first that Pentecost is 50. It's uh, 50 days after the Sabbath or after the Passover. And so here we are. Jesus has, uh, the Passover took place 50 days ago. <coughs> in Acts chapter 1, it says that he was with them for 40 of those days, you know, instructing them, telling them to wait and so forth, showing himself to them. So for 40 days, uh, and, and some have said the Lord was there. Some have said the Lord was there through the Holy Spirit. Uh, but still for 40 days, there was this instruction to wait. They're not sure exactly what they're waiting for. They're not sure exactly what the sign's going to be. They don't really know. They just know that they're commanded to wait before they go out, before they go uh, really get out and preach and try and just go for it because he's already given them a mission, but he had not given them the ability to fulfill the mission. Uh, yeah, they could try and do it without this special empowerment, without the special gift, and it's not that it would have zero fruit, but it would not have the fruit he intended uh, if they were to wait, and so they're waiting. So for 50 days, if you can imagine, for 50 days, they've heard about this thing, this, and I don't mean thing in a negative way, this undescribable, it just means power. Power will come upon you. Immersion in Holy Spirit. 50 days is a long time to wait. Verse 2. And suddenly, oh, I'm sorry, let's go back to verse 1. They were with all accord in one place. That didn't mean they had complete agreement on <coughs> every doctrinal issue, because you know what? The New Testament doctrine was just being uh, formed. Uh, thoughts and ideas and what the Lord meant were just being formed. I mean, look at it. We've got how many churches today? Uh, so there were lots of thoughts and ideas coming into place. Uh, it didn't mean that they agreed completely, perfectly on every single thing. But they were in one accord. They understood their cause, their purpose, their reason for existence. And they were in one place. And we know that what they were doing in that one place is they were praying. They were seeking the Lord. And they were taking care of a few business aspects of the church. Verse 2 and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. It's the sound of a rushing wind. Didn't say that it was a rushing wind, but it was a sound, and it just filled the entire place where they were sitting. Verse 3, Then there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them. Now we know that, well, from other places, it, it, it appears that there's probably 120 or so gathered together in this place, in one place, in one accord. And here all of a sudden, there is this mighty, the sound of a mighty rushing wind and tongues of fire. To them it appeared that there were tongues of fire that sat on each of their heads. Interesting symbolism. First off, it's fire and it's a tongue. I mean, these, it's, a, it's an interesting symbol. The tongue is used to talk, to tell, to speak. And the fact that it's fire uh, uh, implies that it's a tongue on fire, that that God wants to give them a tongue on fire to uh, <coughs> witness effectively. But we also know that this tongue on fire was the, uh, or they're assuming, of course, because they did not had this happen before, was evidence that they were being empowered, that they were receiving power to become witnesses. There was a power filling them, 
with this symbol of a flaming tongue, a tongue on fire. And it sat on every single person who was there. It didn't differentiate. And, verse 4, they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Several words that are critical. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit. This is what we call the baptism of the Holy Spirit. These guys had already been saved. They'd already received the earnest of the deposit. They've already received uh, you know, proof that they're born again, this inward witness. God has changed them. A miracle's taken place. And now it is a time where they are immersed. They are filled with the Holy Spirit. Key word, and they began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. They began to speak, which means it was the beginning. It was not the finality. It was not the last time. It was the beginning of speaking with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance, the Spirit himself gave, gave, them, think, gave them what to speak. And they began to speak with other tongues, filled with the Holy Spirit. God had touched them. No doubt they saw the tongues of fire. No doubt they opened their mouth and began to proclaim or exclaim the great things. But what came out was divine utterance. It wasn't necessarily God taking their jaw and moving it or God, God taking their tongue and flapping it. It was their mouth, their tongue, but when they opened up, to proclaim this amazing event that was taking place, they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. My friend, we need another Pentecost. We need God to move again. We need an outpouring in this day, in this age, like we've never needed it. We need God to move in miraculous power upon us. Father, we invite you to move upon our hearts and our lives and to baptize us in freshness, O oh God, with your Holy Spirit and fire. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thanks for joining me today. Bye-bye.